Hi, I'm Christian. And I'm Vera. And in today's video, we're going to replace the EGR valve. And no. the water pump. <laughs> Nochmal. And in this episode, we're going to replace the EGR valve. And the water pump. On our Discovery 3. Just because they're not enough how to replace your EGR valve videos on YouTube. <laughs> Hope you enjoy the video. I usually open the coolant hose here between the thermostat and that main hose to get the water out. I find that the best spot with the least mess. The least mess means I'm gonna get showered. So I'll put the bucket underneath here. Well, that plan didn't really work. Coolant fluid is not so hazardous. And the Osmo action is watertight, so everything's good. So, with the coolant out, the mess removed, a shower and a new shirt, we're gonna continue. I'm gonna put the hose clamp on right away, so I don't forget. So the next step is we're gonna get the car down in excess height because we're not six foot ten. It's eight o'clock on the Sunday morning. So yeah, we have to do it with manpower. <laughs> First thing when we lift the car up we take the fuse out, third one from the bottom up. This way it's not moving on us, not exhausting any air, it's not complaining, it's not developing a fault. There are a million reasons. Make sure you do not confuse the frame with the air tank like the people in the tire shops do. So put this in here. It's not high enough, isn't it? No, it was, but it was kind of obvious that you need to put one more. You mean it was kind of obvious after it happened? No, before. before. But I was afraid to say something. Why would you be afraid to say something? Oh. It's not looking too pretty, huh? That's good enough. It's already 28 degrees in the morning at 8 o'clock. We're not used to these Australian temperatures. Now we're going to get some plastic stuff out. Remember how we we checked the new Ichi valve? Yes, we checked it. Is breathing? We made a scientific Vera test. <laughs> We're going to do that with the old one too and see if it's really broken. So we are working on the Ichi valve. Yes. yes. I'm careful. Oh, it's moving! Look how it's freezing. You see this? Oh. Both banks. Both banks are operating in the same way. Oh, look! Look, it opens. No, I don't see it because. Here, 90. Go, go, film it. If. Oh yeah. Ooh. A visual. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> It went up and down, up yeah. and down, up it's and down. It's a cleaning cycle. So basically the EGR valve is a prior diesel crisis function. And prior the diesel crisis, nothing mattered. Okay, all that started to matter with the diesel crisis. And when was that? I when want was to say prior 2015, that's when the yeah. diesel crisis happened. So before that, nobody give a damn. Gave a damn. And so yeah. what happens is basically if the car is operated in sunny conditions between 18 and 22 degrees at 80 degrees fuel temperature, no full moon, bright daylight, clean intake air, no air conditioning on, no headlights on, 
no passengers in the car, it will actually use the exhaust gas recirculation and open these valves. These are the conditions. In all other cases, it will never actuate these, so they always closed. They will contaminate strongly because they not cycled and then the internal components start to seize up over time. So whenever you turn the engine off, it will go through a cleaning cycle as you just saw. In certain countries, you need to have the exhaust gas recirculation system actually functioning and you're not allowed to block it, which is most countries in Europe except those who don't give a damn. So if we would block this valve, it is against the law. Um, because in those rare events as described, it wants to use this. In cars prior 2007, I think, don't quote me on this 100%, it does not throw a check engine light if the system is not functioning, which is our car, because it doesn't have a diesel particle filter. It doesn't even have a check engine light. Eh, really? So we would not need to fix these. But because I'm German, I was told to fix stuff when it's broken. Why are you raising your hand? I only have 2% battery left. <laughs> That's like, that reminds me on this movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> where the one terrorist is filming the other guy when he gets all excited and then he says, oh, the battery, <laughs> battery is sinking is. and he's getting all nervous. To simulate if the fault is going away, see I got it plugged in here, bypassed to the original valve and there is no fault, okay? only bus system faults. They are normal on a discovery. So we're gonna fix only the broken valve and risk having a failure on the other valve shortly after. The reason is simply the damn valve is 150 euros. Remember we've been there on vacation? Yes. <laughs> we, we slept right here on this volcanic mountain, right it's here on Volvic, the side. You know? Yeah, that's where we slept. On our yeah. way back from the Pyrenees yeah. through France, we stopped in the evening and it was right here on this mountain here. There. We disconnect the battery because we're gonna take all kind of connectors off and it's gonna lock all kind of faults if we don't do that. And always put your connector out of the way so it can't go back on. And I see people always taking off the positive lead on the battery. Why would you do that? You take off the negative lead. Jeez, why am I so short? I <laughs> because you broke the second step now. We only have one. Oh and goodness. that is for me. We do not have to take everything out to get to the EGR valve, but we will take a whole bunch of stuff out because we want to also take the serpentine belt off and potentially replace the coolant pump, remember? What? I'm running out of ice cream trays. They yeah. Slow See, there's, there's this pipe and there's a bolt here on the side, right there. There's a bolt on the side here. This bolt was missing in mine. Wonder who did this, you know? And this pipe was slipping down at least half an inch, so it wasn't sealing correctly on the intake and the car didn't have full power. We're already gonna take this light out and the grill off. But I also don't want to scratch. Yeah. And we'll take the light too. I'm just so surprised that those clips don't break. Because I'm careful with them. But there's a new vehicle here. That's Robin. It's Aprilia. 125 cubic inch. With the license plate from the Challenger. Because you can't get to it. When you are in Australia, can you leave that off? You don't have this device here. This is now for the Australian viewers. So this is a diesel heater for people living in cold temperatures. It will turn on at six degrees centigrade, and it will start running up until your coolant temperature is eighty degrees, and then it will turn back off. And the car will burn diesel, and the exhaust fumes will come out of the wheel arch. Okay, I'm giving a speech right now. So this device is there because a diesel engine is not efficient enough from the heat development to stay in cold temperatures at a temperature between 70 and 80 degrees centigrade. That's why we folks up here in the northern hemisphere of the globe have a diesel heater. 
And you can be really lucky if you don't have this device because it's always clogged, broken, dirty, not getting any fuel, causing emissions and all other nice problems. So, and of course, it's always in the way. So, just so you know, when Vera is filming me, she is on this ladder and that's why I'm looking so small, okay? Getting the bonnet into service mode. Okay, that's it. You have this ledge here then, and you... It's, it just made a noise. The car is not magnetic. Okay, there is, oh shit. Okay, see here now I got my magnet bolts. Isn't that awesome? So we'll take, oh, I put three bolts in. Uh, only a German would do that. So this is our highly qualified, really very expensive air compressor, but it got a custom bracket. We should take them off and then take this thing off. It's a battery tray. It's just because we're not in the UK, it's a tray. Yeah. But in the UK, this is a battery tray. This is really nice on the Discovery that it got like a tool tray installed here. Where you can put all your stuff. And this way, you know, the likelihood that you drop it into the engine bay is only like 40%. And this thing got to come off, you yeah. don't need to replace this now. See how easy this came out? Yeah. On this side, it's actually possible to get to these bolts without taking this clamp off. Take the EGR connections off. Typically they are an eight millimeter socket, but I replaced mine with Allen bolts. Looks yeah. like heart surgery again. So you've done that before? I've done that about a million times. No, not a million times. Okay, then uh, 500,000 times. Okay, here I can take this out now. There is an O-ring in here, which I use for little crappy situations like that. So... <gasps> Don't lose it! Yeah, there's the... EGR pipe and there's the o-ring down here. I'm running a planking plate The only reason we ran this planking plate was because The EGR valve was broken. So I just stuck this in between the other day. Yeah, so this was only like a temporary solution I made these out of aluminum real quickly last weekend. Yeah, and put them in yeah to figure out not two weeks ago Psst. Yeah There this way this is off. Be careful with your cables. They are the most sensitive thing on a Discovery. You gotta loosen a few of them here to get this a little bit relaxed and out of the way. So this is the new EGR valve. So we gotta take one, two, three bolts out and then two fastening bolts. Here is the EGR valve we want to take out. I can get to this bolt here with an offset spanner and I can break this loose. So the other one, I can actually use a regular spanner like this, an eight millimeter. And once I got them broken loose, I'm gonna use a ratcheting spanner like this one. And the upper one, I can even get out with a regular ratchet. See, this one is the easiest. Yeah, so he put the magnetic tray right onto the fender. I can easily get here with my ratcheting spanner even with an air conditioning line there. See, I got bolt number one out. It looks weird. Yeah, see, when you look in here, you can actually see one bolt from here. You see the ratchet, his ratchet spanner. See, I got it in between. We bought this tool. We call it impulse shopping. It's from Carnex, and you can see how it's in an angle. Yeah. It got like a little tiny ratcheting in it, and I can put a T30 socket now in here. T30. See, this one goes in here. We'll try it. And this is, damn it, too short. Too short. <laughs> it's just a hair tinier. No, which one? It's like this one. Is a hair tinier. So we'll try it if this one works. 
see this one is in. It's very important to have it in all the way. I know you can get your... Maybe we're lucky. And this works now with this thing. Take the magnet out. But why doesn't the land rover do it that way? Because... I'm gonna push this little clip here and take this plug off. There. Reservoir out. This bolt I got here like this. And I'm gonna exchange this bolt to a regular Allen socket, that's for sure. One bolt is about to drop and there it goes. So you have to get two bolts, two fell down. Two? Yeah, and oh. a gasket. Oh shit. One is here. It's the bolt. Um, we're looking for a gasket and for a socket. I had to take the heat shields out, which I was going to avoid. And now... Oh my god, we even dropped the link. This took now an extra half hour. But we didn't find the gasket, right? Well, we didn't look for the gasket. The gasket is not going to do any harm. Clean face of this thing off. This brake cleaner. No, it's, it's not. my Sunday rag. There's your Sunday rag. Is it, it is. the same? Yes, it's the same. You, have you can see that I destroyed this one a little bit. We're going to replace with Allen bolts, yeah, so let's look can. for some. So we got one, and we got a second one which is too long. We and here's a aluminum gasket, the one we lose. And hang on, don't turn it. We need two hands because I have to hold it straight. See the gasket is in between. See this extension going all the way back here where normally the coolant tank is. And see my nice wife being completely stressed out. I'm not stressed. I just get so much okay. yelled at. <laughs> okay, but only off camera. Yeah, I know. Okay, I need you to push this one over. So I got here my impulse shopping quarter inch drive ratchet. So always do your impulse shopping. EGR valve to cooler retaining torque screws, 10 Newton meters. So we got the first one. Here my extensions joined down there. And there's the socket and where I is wedging the coolant pipe over. 10 newton meter is really not much. There it is. 10 newton meter. There you can see how I get my ratchet wrench on this bolt. And it's really close with my new Allen screw. And now it's starting to rain. And now I dropped my wrench. Great. 10 newton meter, it's all it takes. It's not a lot. There, good enough. Now look at this mess here. This indicates that this was a very difficult repair. One thing which got me out of a bind was clearly this little ratchet here. Look, it's not much bigger than my finger. silicon grease so this goes back in here and here is a new gasket yeah it's also kinked yeah new gasket and copper grease Thank you.
nicely in place. The water pump here. That's the water pump. Why are we changing the water pump? I mean, do you think it's broken or is it like in. Oh, can you. Hear that? That's now, can you get the new water pump? No, I can't. Here it is. I don't know if that's the, the right one. Oh, we are still having bolts here, yeah. you know? They had it on sale for 33 euros, okay. the original SKF. So I couldn't resist. Yeah, okay, that's all I want to know. Okay. You know? And I mean, if a water pump is on sale, you gotta really buy it, right? I think you're the only one who looks at a water pump on sale. <sighs> oh, shit, we don't have Ooh, that we seal. This I think this is good. This one has definitely zero play, mm -hmm. okay? It I has hear some, it. It has some play. Yeah. Look, and, and this, doesn't that look like it's leaking out of this cover there? No, I think when... Sure it is. This was leaking out of this cover. My ladder. So, I don't like that ladder. What's this? It's not like this. It's like this. And you gotta hear like a light pop. And you have an o-ring like this, yeah? Yeah, it's in. I didn't hear a pop. The bolts are here. See, and I store my rag in my intake. Oh no. Oh, you took it out, right? Yeah, so now I'll put it back in. See? 10 is like absolutely nothing. You know, I have a manual one in my uh, bike yeah, toolbox. It's okay. <laughs> and the pulley bolts are. 25 1 2 3 When did you build that tool? A couple of weeks ago. And what have you reused before? Nothing. That's tight. See all the grab marks? Yeah. That's how I did it last time. Oh, okay. Use the channel lock. And now it will go on. Yeah. The belt is still good, plus we are carrying a spare. On top of our steering here, there's yes. oil, but this is not oil, this is water. And where's the oil coming from? Um, out of this device here. I think it's called the diesel engine. Yeah. <laughs> here. This is a vis visco clutch cooling fan. Do you know how that works? No, I don't even know what that means. And the problem with these is when you start in the morning, this is really tough. The material inside is still tough and it drags that fan even so the car is actually cold. And when you start on a cold day, the car makes a lot of noise. And then after a mile or so, or half a mile, this material inside here, it's like a silicone, it starts to soften and then the blower will actually stop or run only slowly. It's not good for your neighbors. Left hand thread. That's it. And now you give it a yank. 
that's good enough. Most boring video we ever filmed. Yeah, because we didn't film the good stuff. It's the good stuff when I was yelling with you. All the time. There's not a nice fit here. This is the fit you get. If this would be a challenger, it would be like this much. You could reach in with your hand. And this needs to go in really easy. And he... So we put in silicone loop. We gotta put in your coolant. <gasps> yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> this is another trick. Oh, we are going so gonna forget to close that. No, one. if we don't close that, we get a mess. Yeah. So 1 to 1.5 mixture. Yeah, so we are checking the wheelbase and nuts. Larger wheelbase does make a big difference driving. I didn't realize that in the beginning, yeah. that it's so much better. We love it. But the car drives just more stable. Yeah. Oh, everybody has seen us do that a hundred times. Drop it. Poor. You can wait a second, you know? Not everything goes your pace. Everything goes in my no. pace. You know? Everything Not goes everything in my pace. you want to do right this minute okay, is so the most is important tight. thing. Search one from the bottom here. Listen. It's working. It's working. Yeah? Oh, here they are. No, oh, I'm too small. So cool and you gotta fill it thirty millimeters over the full mark. There's a noise. Yeah, what was it? I don't know. Maybe the coolant on the belt. Yeah. Maybe the new coolant pump. Yeah. Stop. Oh, I think... That's I am the... scared shit. No, that's the coolant on the belt. Oh, you put it, you close? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, close it. Yeah. Ah, oh. Making a mess. So he's checking if the fault is gone. Exhaust gas recirculation valve oh, bank no. V. So clear. We got exhaust gas recirculation valve position bank zero, bank one, and we got the exhaust gas recirculation throttle position those three things we want to display and see they're working no i i have to look through the camera screen see, you have to yeah, tell me see, the number see there is 90 percent they fully open right now 90 percent 90 percent they were like five percent yeah they didn't work anymore yeah. and one was 13 percent yeah so they're working. Now I turn it off and you hear the cleaning cycle. You hear it? You heard it, but click, 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 click. So how about our coolant? Oh, that's still low. Yeah, it's still low. It's still... We still have to put more coolant in. We want to go on a test drive now. <sighs> Not without some coffee. No, actually, I really want to see that EGR valve. The old one? Yes. The old one is not going to work anymore. And it's not going to be, you know, the new one was like going... Yeah, and that is now the second one we put in. The second one on this side. On this side. And on the other side? We put it in. We, we also have changed we put it, it already. It's 120,000. And most likely the other side is gonna fail now soon. It's such a painful job that I wait until it's broken because today I wouldn't have the energy to do it. This is why is this always I mean why do you even up? because this is from over there. 
Oh, I don't even have one you know, side. you're the guy who changed it more than anyone okay. else. You should know by now. Not even a time lapse can fix that. So that was an extremely stressful repair. Very, very difficult. Very hard to get two bolts. A lot of marriage crisis. <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> the time lapse can fix that. So that's it, we got it all back together. We're on a test drive. There are no faults. It doesn't smell like coolant. There's no smoke, no electrical burn. Looks like it's working, right? Yeah. And we're still married. <laughs> there was a lot of off-camera complaining this time. On so, both sides. Yeah. Not just. There is typically a video every week, unless um, we got a burnout syndrome, then we need two weeks for one. Well, no, you can't say it like that. We are not full time YouTubers. Christian works an awful lot and we have kids and our house. If you like the video, think about subscribing. If you're already subscribed, please don't unsubscribe. And we'll see you guys potentially next week. And remember, with a little bit of luck, we'll put together a pressurized water tank and put that onto Fabian's Discovery 3. See you guys next week. See you next week. Stop recording. Okay, here you want me to stop? Yeah. Okay. Wait, oh, wait. Here it is. A really old Unimog. You know, I just noticed him like one or two years ago and now you can't even see it anymore. You know, it's so sad. Okay, what's in here? This is a Unimog. Yeah. It's a really old one. You can't see it up front because it's. Oh. I think some old. This is an old mini mark. This is really incredible. Yeah. It's sitting in there. Have you saw that? Yeah. You know, in a couple of years, nobody knows that this one is sitting here. So I got a gift from the States, from California. Oh, look. And I'm Dr. C. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, Sharpies. <laughs> In what video did you complain about highlighters? I didn't even know they had them. Yeah, Original US Sharpies. Oh, and stickers. Oh, I love stickers. It's from, from Ellen Manor. Mammoth, Mammoth Lake. Lake. We've been to Mammoth Lakes. We've been We've on been US 395. Yeah. That sticker on the car, it's from <laughs> the Disco UK um, forum. We're going to put that sticker on the car. He's, he wrote this May 6th, so it took more than four weeks to get here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. I'm going to write him tomorrow morning. Yes. Yeah. Okay, very well.